So what if I told you there's a car out there that does 0 to 60 in 3.9 seconds, it's got over 500 horsepower, will do 40 miles to the gallon, it's 150 pounds a year to tax and less than 500 pounds a year to insure. Welcome to the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. Now that's a mouthful. <laughs> Well folks, uh, welcome to Back Road Hero, I'm Ed, um, and this is my Alfa Giulia uh, Quadrifoglio. I've had it uh, just over a year now, I've uh, done 8,000 miles in it, gives me a little more insight into the, uh, the car uh, compared to maybe some of the other reviews that you've seen where someone jumps into it for two minutes or a, a day or so and tries attempts to give you a, a full review on a car that they, they haven't lived with and they don't really know um, fully I suppose they've read the spec and the blurb uh, some can't switch the uh, indicators off so anyway this is to give you an insight um, into the Alpha um, why it's so special it's an iconic car um, and will remain so uh, it's a final swan song uh, for Alpha uh, collaboration with I suppose Ferrari um, behind the scenes the same uh, engineer um, chief engineer designed uh, the engineering platform of the Ferrari 458 um, and the Giulia so there's the similarities uh, we'll talk about the engine, why it's so special, what it does, what it does. Uh, we'll have a look at the specifications, um, what's worth getting, what's not. I know a lot of people out there talking about carbon seats and uh, ceramic brakes. So um, stay tuned to find out my uh, thoughts on the whole thing. Um, I wanted a car that was going to replace a classic 911. Um, completely different i had the car over 20 years i did less than 10,000 miles in it sold it with 35,000 miles on the clock um to uh, to will um very deserving owner um and it couldn't have gone to a better place um maybe we'll have a chat and see whether uh, we can revisit the car with will uh, down the line perhaps that might be a whole new episode anyway uh, back to this one um, this is a 2017 car, so one of the very first incarnations. It was updated uh, in 2018 and then further again for the 2020 model year. Um, things that are good, um, things that are bad, um, modifications that you can do, and uh, whether it let me down or not, it did once, um, but more of that later on. So thanks for sticking by. Hopefully uh, this will give you a slightly different uh, insight uh, into uh, possibly buying uh, one of these iconic vehicles or perhaps just general interest in the, uh, in the whole thing. Uh, welcome to uh, Quad Life. This is uh, a year with the Alfa Romeo uh, Giulia Quadrifoglio. So So from any angle, this is uh, a thing of <laughs> absolute beauty. It's a gorgeous car. However, it's a little bit of a, a wolf in sheep's clothing. Um, standard uh, trim, they're all the same. Um, 500 and odd horsepower, 600 Newton meters of torque. Uh, can propel this thing not to 60 in 3.9 seconds and ultimately north of uh, 190 miles an hour. A um, few of the options that I've got on this car 
uh, we'll talk in a second but baseline uh, back in 2017 it was 61 grand um, this has got about five grand's worth of extras on it um, some are worthwhile some maybe not so um, but uh, puts it at 66,000 uh, pounds when it was uh, new I uh, bought it a year ago uh, it had 18,000 miles on it I paid uh, 41,000 pounds for the car so a uh, fair bit of depreciation but their loss is my gain um, I would see these cars bottoming out probably in years to come at the 20 grand sort of mark so it's got you know it's got 18 19 20 thousand pounds to lose um, you can still pick them up now um, in 2021 for around about uh, 36 38 grand I think if I was going to sell this car having driven it 8,000 miles I'd still be looking closer to the 40 grand mark because of the uh, specification uh, as I said, I had a classic 911. I needed a car that was, I could drive every day. It wasn't going to be parked away uh, in a barn. It was uh, needed to be practical. It needed to be economical. Um, uh, it needed to be um, something that I would be prepared to use every day because quite often, uh, if you've got your Aston Martin or your Jaguar um, F Type R, which were all contenders, I suppose, this one, because it does over 40 miles to the gallon uh, to commute. Um, it averages uh, certainly mid 30s. Um, and the figures you see on uh, the official figures, 34 miles per gallon combined. Uh, that's pretty, pretty damn good. Uh, it's practical, it's got five seats. You can put your luggage in it and go to the airport. Um, and nobody's really uh, batting an eyelid uh, too much. People wave at you. Uh, people slow down to have a look and see what it is. Uh, it's not your regular kind of M3, M4, uh, fast Audi, AMG. Um, although it's it, it'll you know it's comparable with those. And when they all top out at 155, this and uh, push on to 191. Anyway, it's about uh, bragging rights, perhaps. So let's get this gorgeous carbon fibre bonnet um, open. So this is what it's all about. Um, a glorious, glorious twin turbo V6 2.9 litres, uh, 500 and something horsepower, 600 newton metres of torque. Um, what people uh, don't tell you is it's actually two engines in one. Um, this is a very, very clever bit of kit. Um, the official figures uh, for the emissions are 189 grams per kilometre. It's got stop-start technology to help with that, but really what it's doing is it's turning uh, via twin ECUs, it's got two separate ECUs, effectively turning it into two different engines. Um, under light loads, when the engine's warm, it needs to be in the top three gears, six, seven, eight uh, light loads in uh, natural or all-weather mode so N or A mode and what it does it shuts down the right, right bank of cylinders turns it into a 1400 and something cc three-cylinder engine um, it's seamless you don't notice any different inside you don't even notice a, a difference in uh, engine note to be honest um, you, what you will see is the uh, economy needle uh, fuel consumption needle uh, go from 30 odd uh, miles to the gallon up to nearly 50. Um, it uh, shuts down the right hand side, runs on the other um, side temporarily, runs for about 100 seconds and then it realises that the cat uh, catalytic converter might be cooling down so it fires up the engine for a few seconds, runs on all six and then shuts it down again. Uh, completely seamless, um, you'll not notice it's happening but it all helps Every time you kind of rise that crest and coast down the other side, um, it uh, really does make a difference on a journey. Uh, over a 50 mile commute, I get over 40 miles to the gallon in this car. Uh, and it makes me not wonder, not worry about um, using it on a daily basis, which is the reason it was bought in the first place. Options, um, five, whole uh, are called dark five whole alloys um, about a 450 pounds option um, you either like them or you don't they're still uh, the same at 19 inches uh, yellow calipers again another 450 pound option 
Uh, we've got uh, darkened windows, we've got a convenience pack on this car, uh, we have got a um, driver assist, I believe it's called. Um, so it's got the, um, the radar, uh, cruise control, uh, that's an absolute must. I believe in the new cars it's standard, um, however this has got um, all sorts of things added into it. It's uh, with the driver assist pack, it's got uh, things like um, as well as the cruise control, it's got auto dimming uh, headlamps, it's got auto brake um, functions, it's got um, uh, warnings um, for the um, car uh, ahead if you haven't noticed it it's got pedestrian warnings as well um, it's really really safe when this car was introduced and launched in 2015 it scored the highest um, at the time mark under the end cap 98 percent for adult occupancy so it's a safe car and that's maybe why i can get it insured for less than 500 quid uh, rural location parked on the driveway 12,000 miles a year including commuting i've got nine years no claims discount and no points on my license so uh, it's a pretty good place to start but 450 quid um, what is surprising on this car as well is that after you pay the luxury car tax it'll be expiring on this car in 2022 so another year to go on that it goes from 490 pounds a year down to just 155 so when you add into the fact that it's less than 500 quid a year to insure um, it's um, going to be 150 quid uh, to tax it for the year there's 600 pounds for the year it's 50 quid a month and that covers your running costs all you've got to do is stick fuel in it and away you go so um, really that's what uh, made me decide that this was uh, the perfect car and the simple fact it was actually my wife that suggested um, that I have a look at the Julia. Um, I've never had an Alpha before. I'd heard all the stories about uh, electrical issues and uh, say problems with the dealers. Um, those days are kind of gone now. Um, yes they're not as mainstream say as uh, bmw or audi they don't have the same throughput of uh, footfall and all the rest of it um, but at the end of the day um, it's a modern car with modern electrics and uh, well as you'll see uh, with the the downside of things um, it, it it can have its little little foibles so whilst it's stunning to look at the real reason why this car is so special is the way it drives so well, let's get it out on the road and we'll have a little chat about that so the driver convenience pack gives you um, keyless entry it's just simply a matter of opening the door that way disarms the alarm and there it is um, just an exquisite um, interior all right, well, let's get it fired up and uh, get us down the road. sticking it in uh, N mode, in uh, natural mode, and, uh, and driving away. Um, steering is light, it's still fairly sharp and responsive, um, and this is your, your normal um, driving state. Suspension um, is soft enough in this one, uh, you've no options, um, it's uh, it's set to soft and that's the uh, the natural mode you can flip it down of course and then after a while it goes back to uh, to normal full auto however dynamic stiffens the steering increases the throttle response um, the gear changes and uh, the uh, stiffens the suspension up, although you can still put it back to soft. So that's dynamic. Then we go one step further. We go into race. 
traction ESC off. It's in manual mode, it says. Uh, best race experience with shifter and manual, so let's do that. We're in second. Oh! <laughs> it never, it, it, ne it never gets old. <laughs> No, um, there's only you, your right foot, and um, the trick differential, the electronic uh, limited slip diff in this thing to get you out of trouble. Um, there have been quadrifoglios lost over the hedge, um, especially in wet weather. So, um, whilst it's nice and it's fun and it's all the rest of it, um, really. Um, a cautionary tale, um, should we say, um, in race mode. It's not, um, it's not big and it's not clever um, to stick it through the hedge. <laughs> um, dynamic mode uh, brings back into the um, uh, some of the protections. Um, and to be honest, let's face it, that's kind of where you want to be. Um, Yes, I've got my race license. Um, I race a BMW uh, endurance racer, um, and even I um, are uh, very, very cautious with this car. Um, it will turn round and uh, and bite you in the ass. There is no doubt about that whatsoever. For some people out there, um, enough is never enough. And if you're one of those people, then there's a company called uh, Celtic Performance, a UK company uh, that have got their own Quadrifoglio um, and they have uh, mapped it um, successfully in a stage one tune uh, to 603 horsepower. So you've added, um, you've added 100 horsepower, you've added to the torque, um, <laughs> you've even more chance of sticking it in the hedge. <laughs> So, um, I have to say, the more um, the more you know this car, the more you realise that 500 horsepower and two-wheel drive is is probably is probably more than enough. So. Um, yep. Especially on a road like this. It's just glorious. I mean, it's subdued in the cabin, um, the engine noise. However, outside, apparently, <laughs> it's it's less so. <laughs> so, another little blip. And I can feel the back end still trying to break free um, in the dry. Uh, and that, uh, that says it all for me. chassis is wonderful uh, the turn in is pin sharp um, if I had one gripe it might be a little bit about the um, electronic brakes um, it's really hard to pull up to a stop um, uh, smoothly should we say even with uh, backing off on the pedal just before you come to a, a stop an old chauffeur's trick into third it really really pulls you can feel the engine um, holding back just that little bit um, as the um, ESP and the traction control um, just limits the limits the uh, the horsepower to maximize the acceleration but um, you get it into third gear and it just it just unleashes completely um, and it does it seamlessly and it'll do it all day every day uh, as I said, I run this on 95 um, unleaded, standard unleaded. There's no need to run um, super unleaded on it at all.
down changes, all wonderful, wonderful things. That's us back home again. That was fun anyway. Um, always, always uh, great experience, never a dull moment. Um, that's what the twisties and back roads are all about. So um, what a lot of reviewers don't talk about is uh, uh, upgrades and modifications that you can do um, to the car. So uh, let's have a little uh, chat about that. So then, uh, let's talk about um, enhancing the car. It's pretty damn good as it is, um, but let's uh, talk about some of the options that uh, I decided to do uh, to improve the car. Um, the uh, Initially, it comes on Pirelli courses. Um, these are a summer tire only. Uh, they uh, need warming up and they're just horrendous in the wet. So most people um, either swap them out early on or for the first winter they go and uh, put like this previous owner did put on the uh, Pirelli Soto Zero winter tires. Um, it essentially means though that you've got to swap things around winter to summer. I've still got the winter tires on. I'm getting the last few miles out of them. Even in summer temperatures, as long as you're not hoofing on, they don't go off um, that quickly. So that's, um, uh, that's fine. But what I have done is I have got a set of uh, uh, Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. Um, it is a popular um, swap out for these cars. They're probably one of the best uh, tires currently on the market, certainly for this uh, level of performance. Uh, when you're talking about two wheel drive, 500 horsepower, um, everything really matters. Um, they are not available, uh, readily available, should I say, in the uh, standard sizes. Um, however, uh, we've got two, four, five, 35s at the front, two, eight 530s at the back, R19s. Um, the, uh, it doesn't seem to be a common size for the, uh, the Pilot Sports. So um, what people tend to do is just up them by 10 mil. Um, it means on a 30 profile tire, you're looking at a, a diameter increase of somewhere like six millimeters. So that's not much. Uh, the uh, speedo tends to be at 70 miles an hour, uh, giving a GPS speed of 67. So hopefully increasing the rolling radius of the tire will bring that up closer to what it should be, uh, being 70 is 70. Uh, the four S's then, uh, two, three, sorry going from 245 35s at the front to 255 35s and then at the rear 29530 r19s um, that would be yeah that would be the first thing i would go and do with the car um, second one uh, would be uh, making sure there's apple carplay uh, eng customs in italy uh, design a uh, plug and play uh, for uh, this car seamless seamless and it's a wonderful thing uh, let's talk about uh, silly options. <laughs> silly options, I mean. Um, do you really want carbon ceramic brakes for six grand? Um, fine under warranty. Uh, you might even struggle to get them replaced if it's wear or if you've uh, used the wrong cleaning agents uh, for your alloys. Um, these are all things that manufacturers will try and get out of. So. Um, it's little things like that. Um, if you want a car for a long time, uh, then you really want to be as economical to uh, to replace as much of the stuff as possible. Uh, you can put uh, the car back onto steel rotors uh, from the ceramics. However, they're a different diameter. The calipers are different, and uh, so is the uh, the pad material. There's a company in the U.S. I believe doing a retrofit kit. So if you needed to swap out your carbon ceramics, then uh, that probably is the most economical way to do it. Uh, think about trying to sell your car at the end of the day. Um, it's going to run out of warranty at some stage. Um, if you're just leasing it, so be it. That's fine. But like me, I want to be a long-term owner. Um, so that really wasn't uh, an option for me. Uh, the steel brakes work well. Six pot calibers up the front, four pot at the back. Uh, the stopping power is just absolutely immense. Um, I've upgraded the pads to uh, EBC yellow stuff as well, uh, which makes a little bit of a difference. Uh, the Akrapovic exhaust at 3,250 quid, really. Um, 
it's got uh, carbon tips. If it was on the car and I wasn't paying any more for it as a used vehicle, then so be it. Um, however, um, Squadra um, in the Netherlands do a little uh, dongle that you plug into the OBD port and you can open uh, the valves um, with that just by pulling the trigger on the, uh, the, the shift, the gear shift. So that's uh, maybe a nice little thing to do uh, for a couple of hundred euros. Um, they also do a um, a, a data logger where you can record your 0 to 60 times and all the rest of it if you're really interested in that sort of stuff um, so be it but uh, a couple of little added things that the squadra uh, dongle does that one you can drop uh, the front splitter for cleaning um, and you can line lock the uh, front wheels for your burnouts if you just wanted to shred uh, those nice new Michelin pilots <laughs> So anyway, uh, not necessarily. I might be interested in uh, the uh, the dongle for the exhaust, but uh, that will come. Okay, uh, you hear a lot of people uh, saying, oh, well, I'm waiting for the right spec to come out. I want ceramics and I want um, uh, the, the, uh, the, the carbon backed seats, the Sparco carbon seats. Um, they are 3,250 quid option um, on the car. Um, you lose heated seat facility um, and you, uh, if you've uh, specced it um, in the driver assistance pack, uh, you lose the, uh, the electrical seat adjustment as well. So maybe not such a good thing. The only person to get to enjoy it is uh, the people in the back seats. Um, they're possibly not just as comfortable as the standard seats. That's an option I could, uh, I could live without. Um, so all in all, um, if I was going to spec my own car uh, new, I would have the uh, driver assistance pack and I would have the convenience pack. I would have the carbon steering wheel. Um, those are probably um, the, the absolute uh, musts for me. Um, the two packs, the convenience and the driver assistance pack, really just turn it into um, a, a really nice machine with all the uh, the driver aids and of course in a, a, a the modern car you get the autonomous two um, self-driving as well on the, the latest 2020 model plus. Um, this one obviously does the radar um, cruise control, it breaks to a halt, it, uh, it in, in queues, it, the traffic moves off and you just you just touch the accelerator and it moves off again and maintains a safe distance as a commuting car it takes a lot of the hassle out of it um, and if you get distracted for whatever reason um, it, it'll just maintain a distance and break to a halt it's um, it, it's just a, a thing to uh, to behold it's absolutely fantastic so uh, <laughs> final final jaunty angle there we go uh, a little view from the front um, quirks on this car okay let's get into it um, you find that the alarm is quite sensitive um, in heavy downpours and rain. Uh, you might find your alarm going off. However, you can take it back to the dealer and get them to desensitize it just that little bit. So that's one thing. Um, <laughs> I'm sure it'll piss off the neighbors, but until you uh, until you realize that there is a there is a fix for that. Um, I've mentioned the uh, Pirelli courses and changing them to the Michelin Pilot Sports. That's pretty much um, a, a done deal. Uh, the other thing is don't drive on the red lights. You get an amber caution for low fuel and then you get a red one uh, right down. Don't drive on the red and certainly don't can it. Um, there have been uh, fuel pressure issues, fuel starvation issues, um, especially uh, when uh, running low levels of fuel. It seems to be a known issue in the Julia's, um, some uh, track focused cars, should we say, race cars are fitting swirl pots to try and uh, to do away with that. So my best advice is um, when you get the amber lights, you've still got um, 70, 80 miles probably indicating uh, left on your tank, um, pop in and fill it up again. Don't take the, uh, the, the, the risk that you're going to get uh, low fuel pressure and all these warnings and everything else. Um, 
puts the usable range about 350 miles so if you need more than that regularly um, then that might be uh, that might be an issue whilst we're on the subject of fuel um, I run this thing on 95 standard unleaded it's never given uh, it's never given a, a, an issue with it as well um, you could run it on super unleaded but the added cost and all the rest of it um, yeah 95 works fine as well so that is uh, let me see oh yes if you get your if you get your active um, your uh, cruise control fault and stuff like that comes on you get a little warning uh, you might just find it's a, a leaf on the radar sensor or uh, something obstructing uh, the, the center windscreen there's another little center uh, sensor right up right in the top of the windscreen there uh, make sure that's nice and clean as well um, start stop technology if you notice that the car is uh, not stopping at the traffic lights when uh, it would normally have done so, uh, pay particular heed to that. I, I told you that the car let me down once it did uh, in home base uh, car park. It started normally, it drove there normally, and then when I jumped back into the car again, um, I hit the ignition on, I got all sorts of fault lights come on and all the rest of it, and the thing just wouldn't start. Um, I was really, really surprised to see that although it was an Alfa Romeo battery in the car, um, that it was a standard lead acid battery. Um, there is uh, there is no place for a lead acid battery in uh, in these cars with stop start technology. Um, a glass mat battery, a decent Varta uh, battery with glass mat is probably the best 250 quid that you'll ever spend on this. Um, three years out of a battery wouldn't be unknown, especially on a, a stop start car. So it was probably time to change that. Um, whether it had been changed previously or not, I don't know. Whether they fit they fitted um, lead acid batteries back in 2017 out of the factory. Um, I don't know either. Um, I just know that I had one fitted um, and it uh, it just wasn't up to the task. So uh, definitely have a get little look and see uh, if you've got one of these cars, have a look and see that it's a lead acid battery. I've heard of uh, other guys having the same issues as well. Uh, finally, um, I had a, a service active aero uh, fault on the car um, when I bought it initially. Um, these cars bottom out, they're very low. The 2017s are lower than the 2018s. They were raised for the 2018 model year. Um, they look a bit say say silly on stilts compared to mine um, a lot of people in tw the 2018 model year cars um, have gone back to 2017 springs um, just to get them settled down but as a result you will you'll scrape it on country roads it'll bottom out in soft mode um, you'll get all sorts of uh, noises um, so um, it wouldn't be unusual that these cars would be um, a, a little bit damaged underneath however if someone drives into a curb in one of these and bends one of the two actuators for the active aero at the front um, there's a chance that uh, you will get a, a service active aero um, that wasn't the case in mine they were straight it hadn't been damaged um, but it just needed a recalibration so that was done through the diagnostic system um, and uh, they either greased it up and, and uh, reassembled it they had a good look around the car but uh, ultimately it was a recalibration that uh, fixed that particular fault all in all, that's been it. It let me down once because of the battery. I had a couple of faults um, there uh, when I bought the car, all resolved. Um, it's been faultless. Uh, now that I've said that, <laughs> probably break down the next time to work. <laughs> but, but, but don't tempt fate. Uh, anyway, um, it's a delight to drive. It's smooth. It's comfortable. Um, all the other reviews are probably pretty accurate in the whole thing. I just hope uh, I've given you a bit more of a further insight into the car from uh, certainly a, a longer term uh, owner's perspective. This one isn't going anywhere. Um, it's an iconic car. I love it. It's a pretty thing. Um, it sounds well and it goes like hell. So if uh, this little video has tempted you into purchase, um, you know what, good on you for taking that, uh, that risk. 
that uh, uh, you're gonna go Italian like me uh, first Italian car um, it's uh, it really it really is well worth it thing of beauty um, spec it the way you like buy a well specced one that's uh, got good service history um, just when we're talking of service history there's a thing called Alpha Care um, three four and five year service packages when you uh, when you buy the car initially uh, I think 2021 prices for a full five year package is about 1200 quid um, so there you go um, 1200 quid for five year servicing I've still got one service left on this uh, it's the big one it's uh, well it, it's got auxiliary belt changes and of course uh, unlike other uh, high performance Italian engines uh, in the past this is a chain driven engine so there's no belts to worry about changing changing um, as well it keeps the servicing cost down um, what is also nice as well is the simple fact that you're uh, you're going to a dealership that services um, you know uh, <laughs> alpha mitos and all the rest of it um, the labor rates aren't going to be extortionate in the same sort of way that perhaps if you go into uh, Aston Martin um, or Ferrari I'd put it comparable with Jaguar with some of the Jaguar servicing and the fixed price servicing is pretty good there um, so the other major contender for this car when I was going to buy it was the uh, Alpha, uh, sorry, the uh, Aston Martin Vantage and the uh, the Jaguar um, F-Type R. Um, but I've explained the reasons uh, earlier um, why I went for this one. I haven't regretted it. Um, I'm sure you'll you'll do um, your your own research. Uh, buy a car, look at it carefully, buy from a reputable dealer, uh, make sure it's got the uh, full service history. Alpha have still, um, <laughs> they've still got service books, um, which is nice. You get a fully stamped um, service history. Of course, they they keep it online as well, but it's old school. I like things like that. I like, uh, I like paperwork. Um, so uh, there we have it. Um, I'll say farewell. Um, who knows what's, uh, what's coming next? Um, we started this channel um, just to uh, in indulge, as I said myself, into everything automotive. We've got uh, a, f a small collection here, um, uh, dating from 1933, um, all the way through here to the Alpha. But this is the this is the hero car. Um, this is the this is the one that we've decided to uh, to launch the channel with. Um, long may it continue. Thanks for watching this far, and uh, well. Um, like share subscribe all that other good stuff um, it does really make a difference in the, uh, the sort of the early stages of the uh, the channel um, who knows where it might all end up long may it continue as I said and uh, well all the best now thanks for tuning in bye bye Well, everyone, uh, welcome to Backroad Hero. I'm Ed, this is Lily, and this is Poppy. And, uh, well, <laughs> they're here to make my life more interesting and, <laughs> and, and yours. No, Poppy, I'm trying to film. No, no, it's very annoying. Thank you.